Shalom, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Ka Hala Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha Rakha Kwadash, double honor to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect that's continuing in the work of our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shai, in all fear. Shall want, Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. We are being taught how to be righteous judges because we have judges upon the earth which are wicked judges, all right? Judges that run the Supreme Court and your local judicial system, all right? These are wicked judges that are set up by Esau, Edom, okay? Yahweh Shai, being the true savior of the King James Version, shall set up righteous judges upon the earth. And that's the governed body of the nation of Israel, the elect of the nation of Israel, shall be the next upright judges upon the planet. Lord willing, we be a part of that number and we give diligence to make our calling of in the election sure, all right, we shall be the next governed body upon the planet. And we are being conditioned right now here in this wicked gross darkness, all right, we are being conditioned to be upright judges, all right, just like the apostles and the elders always speak of the things that elder high priest Yagqua used to teach them all right and mainly the apostles speak of this because they have the experience okay they was taught by high priest uh, elder Yagqua all right and high priest elder Yagqua always used to say um we are being showed um unrighteousness so we can res respect the righteousness all right we are being um, show wickedness so we can appreciate uh, uh, righteousness, okay? And in, in order for you become, to become a righteous judge, all right, you must know what? Both sides. Wickedness and good, okay? And we are in that process, okay? This is St. John chapter 7 and verse 24, and this is an example of being an upright judge. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment, all right? Uh, an individual would say, Great Millstone hates the so-called modern-day white man. They always out on the highways and byways and hedges with Bibles in their hand, cussing out the white man, but they got white men in their camp, okay? Which the so-called modern-day white man, all right, is the devil that the Bible speaks of, okay? And a devil is not going to submit himself unto righteousness, Okay. The brothers that you see in the camps that appear to be so-called modern day white people. All right. The scripture refers to them as the confusion of faces and only a spiritual judge is going to be able to discern that. Why? St. John 7 and 24 judge not according to the appearance, because here at Great Millstone, starting with the head apostles and elders, we don't judge according to the outer appearance. All right. Just because a person looks like a so-called modern day white man doesn't mean that he is a so-called modern day white man just because a person looked like a so-called eastern indian doesn't mean that he's an eastern indian all right we judge according to the spirit say for instance if an individual come up to the camp and he inquiring his truth and he looked like a so-called modern day white man we're not going to judge him according to his outside shell or his body we're going to judge him according to his spirit Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And that's being a righteous judge, all right? Judging according to the spirit. Here's that word righteous, the pronunciation in the Strong's G. Strong's G, 1342. Dikaios. 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 And one definition that I want to get is used of him whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is wholly conformed to the will of the Most High and who therefore needs no ratification in heart or life. And that's right. That's how we judge here at Great Millstone, according to the scripture. All right. We are not conformed to the ways of this world, so we won't judge according to the ways of this world. We are conformed to Yahweh Shah. All right. And we pray that Yahweh Shah 
deliver us in the day of judgment. All right, because Yahweh Shah is a righteous judge. Okay, we want to be cleansed in the sight of the Most High only through Yahweh Shah. All right, and we are being made um, righteous judges here in this current 2019, the year of Karagma. All right, in the midst of this gross darkness, we are learning how to be righteous judges. How? Used of him whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is wholly conformed to the will of the Most High and who therefore needs no ratification in the heart or life. All right. So we don't need any justification. Um, just say uh, the, the, the system don't have to justify us. Okay. The word uh, ratification means we, we, we don't need any uh, justification. All right. In, in heart, which is in mind or in our life, because we are living um, our life wholly to the thinking, feeling, and acting. All right. Of the scriptures. Okay, that's being made a righteous judge. All right. Let's look up the word judge. The pronunciation in the Strong's G. Strong's G 2920. Crisis. 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 All right. And it says, sentence of condemnation, damnatory judgment, condemn condemnation, and punishment. Okay. It says, opinion or decision given concerning anything. Um, it says, concerning justice and injustice, right or wrong. All right. Now, a righteous judge or a balanced judge is going to know both sides. He's going to know how to judge every matter, all right? Because mainly he know both sides. He's experienced good and evil. So he is going to be able to judge uprightly uh, using the Holy Spirit, using those things, using those experience, using the scriptures, right? All of these, all right, uh, makes up a righteous judge, okay? John 7 and 24, again, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. All right. And that's being a spiritual judge. First Corinthians chapter two. And verse 10, but the most high have revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit search of all things. Yeah, the deep things of the most high. And we have been opened up to those things through the spirit. Verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of the Most High knoweth no man but the spirit of the Most High. Verse 12, now we have received the spirit of, now we have received not, Salakia, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the Most High, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the Most High. And that's right, the mysteries that we have received they have been freely given unto us. The spirit that we have received is not the spirit of the world. So we won't judge according to the world. We will judge according to the spirit that the Most High have given unto us. Verse 13, which things also we speak not in the world, not in the word which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And that's how we judge, all right, through the spirit. Verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of the most high, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. All right. And that's what we do. We spiritually discern things. Why? Because we don't like, like the definition says, all right, we don't think upon our own. We don't act upon our own. We don't go freely upon our own way. We don't lean to our own understanding. All right. When it's concerning judgment, we uh, stand upon the scriptures, all right? We stand upon the spirit of, that the Most High have given unto us to make judgments. Verse 15, but he that is spiritual judge of all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. And how do we judge all things? Through the spirit, all right? According to the King James Version. That's why we know that this is a wicked system that we're living in because we judge it according to the King James Version. And everything in this system all right, due to Esau Edom, which is the so-called modern day white man, starting with their top tier elites, all the orders that they send down, all the laws that they make, all the legislations that they pass, they are wicked. 
they're according to man's heart and not according to the way of the King James Version, not according to the spirit, all right? Because Esau, Edom, starting with their top tier elites, have the spirit, all right, of Satan. They don't have the spirit, all right, of the Most High, all right? They don't have a righteous spirit, all right? They're doing their job being the wicked judges of the planet. That's why the planet is in turmoil right now, okay? But we being spiritual judges, we judge of all things, what? Through the spirit, according to the scripture. Verse, verse 16, for who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Hamashiach. And that's how we're being made spiritual judges. All right, because we have been given the mind of Hamashiach because Hamashiach is an upright judge. And when he come back, he's going to judge this place uprightly. Okay, he's going to judge the one that uh, started faithful and continue in the faith. All right, he's going to judge them. And he's going to judge the ones uh, uh, that, that, that are unfaithful. Okay. Now, one example of one righteous judge in our history as being Hebrew Israelites is our King Solomon. All right. And here's an example of King Solomon making a righteous judge. Judgment. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 16. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the king being King Solomon, the wisest king, wisest king all right, of our nation. Verse 17, and the one woman said, O Lord, I am this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. So let's read that again, First Kings 3 and 17. And the one woman said, O my Lord, I and this woman dwelled in one house, and I was dwelled of a child with her in the house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. Salakia, verse 18. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. All right. So two women came to King Solomon. All right. And both, both women was in the house together, and both women delivered a child. So the scripture says, and it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There were no strangers with us in the house, save we two in the house. So the woman that's coming to uh, King Solomon, all right, is saying, look, we both delivered a child and no one else was in there but me and her and the two children. Verse 19, and this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid him. So the woman is telling King Solomon, this woman child died because she slept on the child. She smothered the child overnight. And that happens even today in a lot of cases. Both, uh, verse 20, and she arose at midnight. So the woman is saying the other woman that smothered her child arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and lay her dead child in my bosom. So at midnight, the woman arose after she found out she had killed her child, took her child and laid her child. And this woman that's coming to King Solomon first laid her child in her bosom and took her child with her. So she laid the dead child in her bosom that she had smothered and took this woman's child with her, opposing as if this was her child. Verse 21 and when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, so when a woman arose in the morning to feed her child, behold, behold means look, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, beheld, it was not my son, which I did bear. So when the woman says she looked at the child, noticed the child's face and examined the child because a woman knows her child. All right. She found out this was not her child. Verse 22. And the other woman said, nay. But the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. But the other woman is saying, no, nah, she's lying. Uh, th that's her son. She, she killed her son. This is my son. The son that's alive is my son. And said, and this said, no. But the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. So the women are arguing now back and forth, you know, of whose son the, 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 the living son is. Verse 23, then said the king, the one said, 
this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. So King Solomon is saying, this, this is a bunch of confusion. All right. So King Solomon finally makes the righteous decision. All right. And says here in first King three and 24. And the king said, so King Solomon said, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. So King Solomon is saying, hey, cut the child in half and give one half to the woman that says, uh, uh, um, this is my child and give another half to the other woman that's claiming this is uh, her child. Verse 26, then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king. So the woman whose child it really was, she spake unto King Solomon for her bowels yearned upon her son. Okay. For her, the, the compassion for her son, she was yearning upon it when King Solomon was going to split him in half. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child. So the woman that, that really was the mother of the child said, hey, King, give the woman the, the child that says that it, it's her, but it's really not just to save the child's life. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child and in no wise slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. So King Solomon was very wise in this, in this decision. The woman that stepped forward and said, hey, give this child to her because her bowels was yearning for a child. The compassion for her child was yearning because she was really the mother. She didn't want her child uh, to get killed. She she rather her child be given to the one that was lying than her child to be slain. But the one that was lying was saying, let it be neither mine or thine, but divide it. She didn't care because it really wasn't her child. Verse 27, then the king answered and, and said, give her the living child and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof because of the, the comment that she made and the comment that the other woman made. King Solomon made a beautiful, righteous decision, an upright decision. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of the most high was in him to do judgment. And that's us. We're coming in the footsteps. We are being conditioned, all right, to be righteous judgments, ju judges, all right? Because what? The wisdom of the Most High is in us. The spirit of the Most High is in us. And that's how we judge, through the wisdom of the Most High, according to the King James Version, all right? And, and we are in the process of being uh, uh, righteous judges, man. All right. And we will be at our perfection once the law, statutes and, and commandments are written in our inward parts. All right. And we are in the kingdom. But right now we're being conditioned to be the next governed body. All right. The, the next government of the planet. All right. How? Through the wisdom of the most high and through the spirit. All right. Lord willing, I pray that this been edifying. Shalom.